Three years ago, I remember the, the first time I looked at a drone, it took me maybe one flight to realize it was totally revolutionary. I'm Dakota Crow. Several years ago, got the chance to start flying, help out our family farm, and uh, just last year, morphed that into a seed and spray business. We're grass farmers. Main economy around here is cattle. So for us, pasture management is literally everything. Over the years, the aerial drone spraying, seeding, is actually how I got back into the farm. Uh, you're kind of coached as a kid, you grow up, you go to college, you get a job. This is what brought me back to the farm and to my passion. Pasture land for us is, is vital to everything. It is our input. The biggest hurdles that we used to face were just getting the equipment into the field was, was a challenge, whether that was a sprayer with, with giant booms. Planes and helicopters here, you know, in Southern Missouri and the Ozarks are, are challenging to get, um, and it's, it's quite expensive, you know, to get here, and there's a bunch of other requirements. So for us here, the shape of our field, the size of it, it's a non-starter. I mean, we don't have a helicopter option, we don't have a plane option, and because of that, we've, we've never even had the chance to use it on our own farms. Maybe that corn does not get an application on it that it critically needed. You know, we're spraying a lot of biological products on corn. You know, that didn't happen before because you couldn't get in and it didn't make any sense. So if that increases yield 5%, 10%, I mean, that's amazing. When you're talking about tens of thousands of pounds of, of yield, 10% goes a long way. And when you have a society and economy that's asking for more and more and more and more, cheaper, 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 the drone has been an amazing you know, application. So moisture levels rain around here. I mean, you might get a two or three, four inch rain, right? Totally saturates everything, but you have to get a project done. With a drone, we don't have to wait anymore. We can get it done anytime we want. It doesn't matter how soupy, how wet the ground is. We can get that project done. I mean, we're able to cover ground now that we never could in, in any kind of ground rig. It just, it wasn't safe and it, it really wasn't possible. So the ability to, you know, fly something on from a half mile away, let's say, you know, we've got a piece of equipment now that, that can get to some of these hillier terrains that we have kind of neglected because we had no other solution. Post-emergence brain, it's getting ahead of the curve. Not only can you, you know, essentially weed control, you know, prior to the weed even popping up, it's gonna stick around a little bit longer. It's one of those things where staying ahead of it is, is key. Um, and having that post-emergent control on your weeds, et cetera, it's, it's pretty critical. We like to start with you know, Mavic 3 multi-spectral. You essentially get that feedback of what's in the field. You piece that together in that software. You send that map and spray pattern to the big drone, the T50. And, and you go out and, and you rock and roll. There's a lot of smaller plots around here, I mean, that, that are still very useful. With the speed of the T50, we not only have the time now to get other things done, but we now have the ability to get in there. Yeah, you know, we can toss a T50 in the back of the side-by-side -side and a couple extra batteries and knock out a three, four, or five acre plot, you know, in, in under an hour. So I think the drone technology specifically is so good for invasive species because a lot of times it's isolated. Putting the product in the place that it needs to go, I mean, we can run this stuff right where we want to. Let's say you got a 100 acre field, got some blackberry patches in it. Instead of spraying all of it, let's say you have 10 acres of the whole entire thing that's just kind of patchy and blackberries. You go in, you're in and out, and you're in it for 10% of the cost. So that's where you know, some of that money can either go back in the pocket of the farmer. I can honestly see a day, and I advocate for it, where a drone is in the equipment lineup of almost every farm around. 